So now I'm making the mounts for the uh, table saw. This was my original mounts that went with the, the original Polk workbench. And I made it out of uh, two by, some two by dug for scrap I had. But I decided uh, to be efficient, I'm keeping all the material uh, for the Polk workbench too made out of half inch ply. And I've already made a couple of them up. I've got six of them, three for each side that I'll be laminating together. I've got to make four more and I could, uh, you know, drill the holes and use a jigsaw and cut out um, each one of these individually. But rather than doing that, I took the time to lay out what I needed, took a three quarter inch paddle bit, spade bit, drilled the two corners, took a jigsaw and, uh, took a jigsaw and cut, you know, connected the dots and created a, a nice little pattern out of some scrap three quarter ply. And I'm using my same uh, half inch uh, up and down cut spiral cutter with a template. So I've cut these 45s, they leave a flat edge and then I'll be li lining up to those 45s with this material here creating this sort of a V groove and that rests on the pipe. Now the bottom is finished, I'll be cutting the tops off, that's where we're too long. But again, this is specific to the DeWalt. If you've got another brand, you'll need to make adjustments to fit your saw. So just like on the other side, I will slip the handle up in there, push it forward until this, this edge of the handle hits the underside. Now I'll go put it on the table and uh, make my measurement. Now when I rip these down, uh, I want to make sure that when I'm running a board across that I don't bump into the table. So if, if I'm gonna uh, err, uh, you know, err on the side of caution, I want the, this table just a skosh higher than this so that the run out, not so much that it'll drop down, but just so that I won't uh, hit this edge. Perfect, I thought maybe I'd have to do one more cut because I thought I left a little extra on, but I am good. I see just a tiny bit of daylight. So that means when I run a board across there, it will not bump into the table there. The last detail on the um, workbench is to cut out the, the, the um, dados here for the uh, miter gauge. I just took a straight edge and, and lined these up and made, a, uh, made a, uh, marks where it needs to go. And then I'm going to make uh, the, the dado actually wider than that and a little bit longer than I need. Uh, there's no need that this be a tight fit, just, just needs to be a run out. And I just taken this same pattern that I've used for the other cuts and I adjusted it a little bit. Uh, I made it an inch and a half wide, just took uh, uh, three pieces of uh, half inch plywood, put it in, got the spacing I need, and then using the template, it'll become an eighth of an inch narrower, which will be plenty of width uh, to do this. And so I'll just kind of eyeball this and then clamp it down with the uh, Festool clamps. So that was the last detail to complete the Polk workbench. If you've been following along, your bench is now ready to use. Hopefully the series of videos will help in understanding it. If you get the plans, uh, or if you just want to build it from the videos, that's certainly an option. But if you get the plans, hopefully these videos will um, help you out. So uh, thanks for taking the time to watch.